Do 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 da ba ba bow bow. What music is playing in your retail store? Have you ever even thought about the music in your retail store? And before you answer while you're driving down the road or walking the dog or whatever you're doing right now, before you answer that question, do not say, yes, I thought about it when my employee said they are tired of hearing this song over and over. Your employee should not be dictating the music in your retail store. Did you know that 57% of consumers said they would leave their cart in a store if the music was bad? We are talking about the music selection in your retail store today. Going to tell you about a ton of statistics and studies that have been done on this crazy stat and crazy subconscious behavior that people have in retail stores around music. I hope you enjoy. Hello and welcome to the Better Business Podcast, where we help you improve your family-owned retail business. I'm with my co-host today, Chris Fox from Fox Strategy, the marketing genius. And my name is Steve Cook. I'm a third generation business owner. And with the things I've learned and talk about on this show, I've taken my family's retail business to over $10 million in sales. Now let's get to the show. Well, if you're like a lot of our listeners, you're making choices about the shopping environment that you're creating for customers in your retail stores. Um, I came across this stat this week and I thought it would be great for us to talk um, through it. So Steve, in 2019, a study found that 57% of consumers said that they would leave their cart in a store if the music playing over the speakers was bad. And then that same study, nearly half of the people in that study said that they would and had spent longer in a store specifically because they liked the music that was being played. What, what does that say to you as a family owned retail shop? I'd love your thoughts. So first off, I am not a huge music guy at all. <laughs> I only listen to podcasts and things like that while I'm driving in my car. I do a little bit like any like exercise stuff, you know, I have music on and stuff, but, um, so that the stat that people admit that they would leave a store blows my mind. Right now, what I think most powerful about this is the subconscious mm. is that I, I thought I've always known that, um, I looked up the study in 1982, there was a study done known as the pleasure arousal dominance model, which is, uh, Results suggest that a store's atmosphere affects the emotional states of a customer. Wow. But most of these studies that are done are these blind studies where customers don't know how the music is affecting them. Mm. So the fact that somebody admits that I would leave a store in, you know, and maybe it's because I'm not a music person, so I don't understand that. But um, I've known that subconsciously people, it affects their state of mood or, you know, upbeat music makes people want to go faster. Slower music makes them, you know, yeah. things like that. But I th that blew my mind. Um, that someone would admit that I would leave because I would never, I mean, I don't know. Would you? Would you leave a store? I, well, I can't say that I've ever left a store because of music. I will say that I have commented on music or lack of music multiple times. I, I can remember wow. huh. I can remember being in stores, and I'll give you an example. Um, our target that's local to us for whatever reason, and my wife and I have discussed this multiple times, they play zero music, no music. It Weird. is so quiet there, and I cannot figure out why, because you go seven miles down the road, we have a, a super target, and when we have to go down there, you walk in, and it's play they're playing music, and I just remember one time noticing, oh, wow, there's music here, but there isn't at our target in our hometown. And it's very weird. So that's something that I like that you bring up the difference between conscious and subconscious. I totally can see how we would be impacted subconsciously by music and environment and all of that. I don't know that I've ever left a store because of music, but um, I have noticed it before. And I think the, mo the biggest topic of this at least um, has come in the form of employees talking about it, at least in my experience. That is a very, if you've ever worked uh, 
somewhere that forces you, like a franchise or a yeah. corporation or something like that, that forces you to listen to a set soundtrack or whatever. Um, I remember when I was growing up, my parents had the Quiznos uh, sandwich places, and there was this deal called Muzak. And uh, it was yeah. this like specific deal, and you had to put in this CD at like this time of the year or whatever, and you could only you were only supposed to have that CD on. So it was nationwide, all the you know it was like the top hits of the whatever. But it was only like I don't know twelve songs or something like that. Wow. Well, when you're on an eight hour shift or something. I mean, you hear these songs, and it was like quarterly or maybe monthly. But I mean, you're hearing these same twelve songs five days a week for an insane amount of hours. Yeah. And so by the end of that CD, you were just like begging to get anything else, especially around the holidays and things. So I know that employees, that's where you hear it the most because they're, they're hearing it over and over and over. So, um, but yeah, I think there's a lot of, uh, implications for customers as well, which is obviously the main, sure. the main reason why we're talking about it. Well, and I'm glad you brought up employees. I, I wasn't, I wasn't even going to say this in this episode, but I had it in my notes so there is a company who researches this and here's their stat, here's their recommendation for consideration of your employees. So if you're a family owned retail business, you know, in our listener group, here is what the experts are telling you for your employees sake, you need a minimum of 750 songs on a playlist that are refreshed monthly where you take 50 and put them in and take 50 and put them out and have them in waiting for a couple of months before you put those 50 back in. That's the recommendation from experts if you're a retail business looking to not drive your employees crazy with the music you're playing. 750 songs on a rotating playlist. That's crazy. That's a ton. That's a ton. Um, but yeah. you think about the I mean, number of the, hours your employees spend there. Yeah, like they're hearing that music over and over and over again. So. Yeah, that's crazy. Hundred percent agree, though. Because uh, I've been, I've been a, a victim. I would call that a victim. I've been a, a victim. victim a victim of that. But you're... I still remember the songs. Oh. I mean, there's there's multiple songs that'll come on, and I'm like, dude, this makes me think of washing dishes or something. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, and that that memory is really powerful. Uh, I don't think we have time to dive into it, but there's also crazy studies and stats on when bad things happen at stores, robberies, active shooter situations, there are consulting companies that specifically have um, policy and and triggers where white noise will play and then they remove certain songs from when, when employees were traumatized so that, as not to re-traumatize because those memories wow. are powerful. Those, those, you know, sense memories, right? Like smell memories, sound memories, taste memories, yes. very powerful because yeah. they're so subconscious. In a lot of these studies that I was reading about uh, music, uh, a lot of scent things came up, mm. and I didn't realize how powerful the scent was to affect a shopping. But it makes sense with a, uh, you know, I hear a lot of people joking about the Abercrombies and the Hollisters and all those stores that so I true. mean, at least when I was growing up, <laughs> yeah. that uh, you know, the strong smells and stuff. And yeah. I didn't realize how much that had a effect on a customer subconscious as well. Um, so yeah, Oof. that's that's super interesting. Which, like you're saying, the big the big question of of like why we're talking about this and really why family-based retail businesses should think about it is how does it affect our customers? How does it affect the shopping environment? And I think I would say if you're a family-owned retail business, you at least need to spend some time and energy making sure that the music going on in your stores uh, is really serving your brand. It's on brand, right? It needs to reflect the core brand message, the ideal customer persona that you're serving. Um, and, and think through those things. If these are our ideal customers, um, what kind of music are they finding, you know, really great? Maybe not trendy, uh, but what do they really enjoy? And then what is really on brand for us? You know, it, it, music is a very subjective thing. So same as the colors you use in your brand, the, you know, graphics you use on your social media, the way that your customer service people talk to your customers, um, all of that is on your is is indicative of your brand, and I think music is the same way. So, if you're wanting to be really strategic about this, you need to do something more than just a popular playlist. You really need to create that strategy that links these song selections to your brand attributes. Yeah, this is something that is business one hundred and one. If your mind is right with 
the way that the customer should be treated, then this could probably just be a steady reminder of you. You just didn't realize how strong and powerful that music actually is uh, for your customer shopping experience. And when you put it in that perspective, I think the biggest deal is that employee opinions don't matter about the music. Employee opinions don't matter about which products you carry. Employee opinions don't matter about the pricing and the color of your brand and all those things. And and if you accept those facts with the, th- the products that you carry and everything like that, if you accept that and you're good at all the other facets of your business, you need to realize that music plays a part in that. But if you if you have a different opinion on, on the way that the customer should be treated or something like that, then obviously you have to go back to square one of, of how – you know, treating your customer and making them the most important um, thing more than an employee's opinion and stuff like that. I mean, th- that would be a totally different conversation. But I think a lot of people just don't think about the music being part of the customer experience and how the way you lay out your store is either rude or complimentary to your customer. The way you, you know, have your products laid out and the way that you greet a customer. I think a lot of people think about those things. But they forget, they think that the music is just driven off of the employees because the employees can drive your business if hmm. you're not if you're not careful and, and they don't sure. know either, right? I mean I've I've brought that up before. It's not about you, it's about our customer yeah. and what they want to listen to. And they don't like this type of music or they don't like this type of you know, or whatever it is. So yeah. That's a good yeah, point. I think I think that uh, I think it's I think for most people it's just a reminder and they didn't realize the music was so impactful. Sure. And, and so then I, I thought our listeners would be asking, OK, so then great. All, all of this is is good to know. What kind of music should I play? So a um, couple of things we want to say. Research shows that there's really two um, decision making systems or mindsets that shoppers or consumers are in um, while they're visiting retail stores. The first is a very habit-based system. Um, This would be like where a shopper is focused on their needs. Um, I got to get this. This is what's on my list. And an important part of this decision-making system is that they're resistant to buying new products or uh, learning new information. So it's very Um, habit-focused. I need this. I'm here for this. I'm kind of tunnel vision and not really um, not really looking at what's to the right or the left. The music for this kind of customer, this kind of decision making system that could support it and keep a person in that mindset is going to be fast paced music with a driving beat. Um, and this might be really great for, you know, a fast fashion shop, um, a busy coffee spot that's serving lots of customers. So maybe like, a, a, you know, either a coffee shop in the morning or a coffee shop on a busy highway to a downtown location where you're going to be turning a lot of customers. Anytime that, that you are wanting your shoppers to be very focused um, or they're going to have like habit based purchases that they're making, you could go with some, um, you know, fast paced music, uh, a driving beat, and that's going to keep people cycling through. It's going to keep them on their mission. The second, though, uh, is a learning based system. So this decision making system that shoppers get into is where they're reading nutrition labels, they're pondering a large purchase, and the, the hallmark of this kind of shopper is they're seeking new information and they're willing to process that information in the store. So this decision-making system could be supported by music that matches the mood, right? It's slow, it's deliberate, it's intentional. Um, it needs to still be engaging. You know, again, you have to go back to what's on brand. Maybe you have a brand that is really well served or matches classical music. So you pick something that's slow and deliberate and intentional um, in the classical genre. But you can also have classical music that's fast paced and on beat with, you know, driven if that's again, the brand you're trying to push um, based on which decision-making system you really want your, uh, your customers in. So that second one, the learning based, that would be maybe like a luxury boutique where people are needing to time to consider large purchases or they um, you know, maybe want to be wooed or they want to spend a good amount of time there. Uh, also grocery stores. If you're a family owned grocery store, something that's slow, deliberate, intentional is, is actually comforting people and almost like keeping them in that shopping mode where they're l- looking at other products. Um, and it sure, sure could be argued that, you know, habit-based systems for shoppers where people are coming in for the milk bread and eggs that they need, 
but again, you'd have to ask yourself, you probably want them to stop and shop along the way. So something that kicks them out of that habit-based system into uh, the willingness to learn and, and look around and try new things, that's a way that you could get strategic about the music that you play um, in your store. What did you think about those two decision-making systems? Yeah, I I didn't see the decision making um, portion as much as I just saw that the genre of music you play yeah. about being on your your t- particular brand. Um, I looked up a uh, 2007 study on the effect of background music on customer or on consumers. Um, it stated that playing classical music in a wine store was found to increase sales while influencing consumers to purchase more expensive merchandise. So wow. um, when they played a certain type of music, in this instance classical music, it actually raised their average ticket for the day, um, and they were able to prove that. Um, and the conclusion says um, basically it's always best to tailor your choices to your target market. Mm. Um, you know, And this goes with the brand that you're talking about, yeah. is to play the type of music that you know your customer, your ideal customer, would want to hear um now the speed of music it it is retail 101 and there is countless amounts of studies that show the longer someone spends in your store the more money they will spend wow so it is retail 101 to try and slow people down to keep them away from the register to give them a shopping cart to (laughs) whatever you can do to get them to hang out there um so really the fast paced you know when you were talking about the fast paced music I don't ever see even a coffee shop somebody that's trying to get people through the line yeah the longer that people are in their store the longer that they're pondering in front of that cooler and like ah oh, fine I'll get a muffin sure. or you know the longer <laughs> that somebody is in their store would still be a, a longer opportunity for them to buy the t-shirt on the shelf or to whatever yeah. um and I almost think that at some point the faster and more intense your music is that that plays into the atmosphere of the environment too, that that encourages uh, customers to be frustrated or yell when your order's not ready and things yeah. like that. That when you walk in somewhere and it's like, do, 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 you're just like, huh, look at this little coffee shop. You know, I mean, and if you walked in and it was like upbeat, fast music, you'd be like, is my order ready? Is my order ready? You know, I don't know. I, I, I just don't see really a, a, place where upbeat tempo Mm. music is really appropriate in any atmosphere as far as getting customers in and out of your doors i can't think of a a situation where that would be a good thing to get customers in and out well i would say if if we have any family-owned restaurants you know listening it and it depends because if if your Mm. restaurant's a quick service restaurant where you know that your scale of your revenue is actually to turn tables, not to increase mm, per point. ticket you know, value. And that's, again, going back to what are your goals um, as far as, as your customer interactions go and also what's your brand? Because if, if you are in a state where, and let's take a coffee shop, um, and I kind of thought, it, it, you're right, Steve, some coffee shops, and I think maybe a lot around here, are going to be those coffee shops where people often go and sit and work or sit and conversate. But Mm -hmm. there are coffee shops on thoroughfares, you know, like where people only have a small amount of time. And so they're not really, they're not coming in looking to hang out and sit. So that music could support the idea of we're on fire this morning. You know, you should stop here because you can count on this to be fast paced. It just might support that Mm -hmm. brand attribute. Um, that you want to go for. So I think it, it, it's, it could be very strategic, um, depending on what kind of business you run. And then I think that would be my first big question to anybody who was wondering about this is what's your route to higher revenue? Is it to increase your individual ticket or is it to increase the number of customers you get in this door every day? Because if it's one or the other, that could, that could easily, um, dictate what your music strategy could be. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, just all encompassing that I would say basically that your music needs to be thought out. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) That would be my my general sentiment is your your music is not, 
I would say the biggest struggle with music is your employees are not the deciding factor of your music. It is for the people that shop in your location and that if you have identified your target customer that you should choose music that would uh, satisfy and make them happy no matter what genre, no matter what tempo or pace or whatever it might be. What would my target customer want to hear? And I, I think too – we're we're getting ticky tacky if we you know try to get down into the tempo and all that stuff with a lot of this that i think if you are deliberate in the music that you select that that will solve a whole lot of issues of um you know having a, a tractor store or have hip hop music that if you stay away from things like that clear obvious um negative music that would be turn that would turn off your customers um i think that all encompassing that that would be the best way to move forward yeah i think totally agree um the thing you need to look at is the environment you're creating if you create an a create a better environment for your shoppers they're going to want to come back that's just a very natural uh thing for us humans and that's going to leave them with a really great feeling about your retail location and so music and sound are crucial to that environment. And you really need to take some time, someone in your business, whether it's you or you know, someone in your marketing department, uh, wherever, uh, needs to take some time and, and build that strategy for keeping your whole shopping environment on brand. Now, I think, I think that's it. Um, like anything in business, be intentional and look to serve the people um, who are your ideal customers, and that's gonna that's gonna take care of ninety percent of this for you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the podcast with me, Steve Cook, and my co-host Chris Fox from Fox Strategy. Hope you will uh, tune into more episodes with me and Chris, and hear our banter, pointless chatter back and forth. That's Thank right. you for listening to this episode.